And that is Boom by a band called Sin. Check them out. They have recently opened for Tesla. They do a lot of fly-in gigs. Uh, good guys. All right, Scotty, what do we got? Oh, that's Darren. That's Scott. I'm Rob. What do we got going, Scott? Oh, you know okay. what? I better I better make this clear. This was uh, requested by a viewer. Yes. Um, and we Sweet. tried to do Bark at the Moon, was it? And it got all screwed yeah. up. Um, I'm sorry. I don't have the guy's name on here, but you know who you are. Um, yeah, you know who you are, man. Go ahead, Scott. Set us up. We... We switched it to Diary of a Madman. We may hit Bark at the Moon at the end of the line and in a couple of years if we get to it. Yeah. Um, but we decided to go with this one because we did do a whole freaking video on Bark at the Moon, believe it or not. So um, we're going to go with the Prince of Darkness himself, the Oz Man. Diary of a Madman, one of my favorites by him. Not my favorite, but I've always liked Ozzy, so I've always liked Sabbath. And this is kind of a Sabbath-ish style on some of these songs, but some of these songs are just coming from the Oz, man. His total new style, too, man. Um, not a bad album. I've always liked it. The, out, the last album with the uh, Randy Rhodes before he was, you know, killed in a plane. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, it would have been nice to have seen how he would have blossomed over the years. And, and you know, it, it's kind of a uh, double-sided coin, too, you know, because would we have seen Jakey e. Lee pop up somewhere, somehow? You know, if that hadn't happened, I'm not saying I wanted the guy to get killed in a plane crash, but um, Ozzy's had some great guitarists. But anyway, Diary of Madman song. I'm going to say there's not a song on here that I dislike, and y'all just froze. What? Or is that just me? That's no, just that you. Was damn, yeah. damn it. Quit calling you me. Get, that's what happened. Yeah, that's song that's song. what happened. Anyway, yeah. I there's one song that I'm not crazy about, but I don't hate your it. volume it's went down. Bad, but the rest of them, huh? Whatever you did to your phone dropped your volume. Damn it. I wish people would quit fucking calling me. There you go. You're good. Yeah, do not disturb setting on your phone. You're sideways. There you go. Sorry, guys. You know, I try to tell people when I'm doing this. <laughs> don't mess with me. But they don't care, so they just call me. I just know them anyway. I just... Okay. <laughs> now, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yes. God, yes. <laughs> you got more issues than. Fucking Saturday evening post. <laughs> uh, you got it? There you go. Okay, I, I actually went to church today, guys. You know, hey, give me a pat on the back. Come on now. I had to turn all my settings down. So <laughs> I forgot to turn that one back up. My bad. Excuse all me right. for going to the old house. Darren, your anyway, thoughts on the album. Thank you. All right. Um, it's, I mean, like Scott said, uh, it's not a bad album. I mean, there really isn't anything on here that I felt was cringeworthy. Um, I mean, eight songs and five of them are over five minutes. So there are some that get too long for my, 
for my liking. Um, I mean, even some of the better songs that are long, I wish would have ended quicker. Um, but yeah, it's, and surprisingly enough to me, I mean, I know that I've heard this before, but um, for some reason I thought there would have been more, a little bit more up-tempo on some of these. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of like mid to slow rockers rather than, I mean, I know that he's not thrash metal by any means, but still um, a little bit of a surprise after not listening to this album for a long time in its entirety. So that's where I stood. Yeah, I, I, I've been surprised even with Bark at the Moon and now this, the amount of slower tempo songs he has. I, I just, I never went into Aussie music thinking about that, especially since my favorite album is Ultimate Sin and that's not the case with that album. Um, I didn't like this as much as you guys. There's three songs on here that I like. Um, the rest aren't horrible other than one. My number eight is absolutely terrible. Um, other than that, it's just a, it is what it is. Uh, I do have a note here that everyone who thinks that any other album other than Ultimate Sin is the best Aussie solo album is on drugs. Because from what I've heard here, and I've heard No More Tears album, nothing compares. Nothing. Nothing. Not Zach Wilde, not Randy Rhodes. Some kind of magic went into that fucking Ultimate Sin album, and it was never captured again. Uh, so these albums with Randy are just not cutting it for me. And I know it's not Randy's fault, so back off. I'm just saying uh, something clicked with Ozzy when that Ultimate Sin album hit. And even going forward, they got better, right? You know, Crazy Babies and stuff. He started being more a metal guy that you expected some of these albums post black Sabbath are the furthest thing I would have ever imagined coming out of Ozzy with the exception of a couple songs on each album. So what are you doing? I don't know, but I'm what? sure your parents what? told you this a lot as a kid, Scott, stop touching it. What, what, what do you guys think that Ozzy is? I mean, you guys know black Sabbath's music, right? I mean, you know yes. Ozzy's music, right? Paranoid. It's a heavy, Iron it's Man. not a thrash music, man. No, I never dude. said it was thrash, but dude. I didn't think he was fucking Linda Ronstadt either. I mean, correct. Right. You're, 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 there, there's, the no, there's no in between here. Would I wouldn't call ACDC thrash, but that's how no. heavy I would. All right. And that's how heavy I would expect Ozzy to be. And he's not until hey. Ultimate Sin going forward. Uh you know, he, he is. It's just the production on some of these albums. Are horrible. So the, but the production like, doesn't control, the production the production doesn't control the fact that he's got like three ballads per album. That's not Ozzy. Mm, Ozzy Ozzy's a dark ballad type guy. But, but it's still a ballad. Know, it, all, it, all we're it, saying is we're expecting him to be a little bit more Iron Man in a little less ballady. Okay. So y'all, yeah. y'all are probably not up on the dis whole discography, right? No, no, I'm not. I, I admit that, right? I mean, okay. Um, I mean, but I was it's, just kind of trying to get an understanding of what y'all were coming from with the Oz man's music and what y'all didn't understand. I guess I didn't, you'll have I, to. I for me, I, I would say I I've listened to him backwards, right? The newer, I mean, <laughs> me too. I didn't, I didn't, me I mean, too. Right, because no, I'm serious. I didn't start off with his early stuff like this. What came out in '78 or '79? I'm five or six. I'm not listening to Ozzy Osbourne. Eighty-two, eighty-one. Either okay. way, either I guess uh, I, I take that, that's because I was listening to the Van Halen album earlier today. That was '78 or '79, right? But so I mean, I probably started listening to Ozzy more around the Ultimate Sin album, and then going forward me from too. there. And Me then too. working my way backward into his stuff. My, my first experience with Ozzy post Black Sabbath was when the Double Live came out, tribute to Randy Rhodes. That was my first exposure. There was, there didn't, I don't remember any of this sappy ass ballad shit. And then Ultimate Sin, you know, uh, Lightning Strikes, Ultimate Sin, these videos are hitting Headbangers Ball and it's badass metal music. 
I didn't. I knew of Suicide Solution because of the controversy. I knew his hits. You know that he would have one from each album, pretty much. Bark at the Moon. But other than that, I never went back to these. Our first listens for me, other than Ultimate Sin, Bark at the Moon, and Dire Mad Mad, this is the first time I've listened to either one of them all the way through. So if it wasn't a known song, I didn't know it. I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's bad. I, I think we're both just saying we're a little surprised at how down tempo he was before he became bigger than life, Ozzy. Right. And then, okay. and then the people's reaction. I mean, everybody, I mean, you would have, you would have thought by how, how many fans he has, especially the ones that started out earlier in his career, always saying how heavy he was or how, I mean, and then to listen to some of the stuff, it's like, I don't, I don't get how they could say that because he had a lot of mellow stuff. So like I said, that was the bigger surprise for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Scott, so, you're the yeah, Aussie expert. So we'll let you go explain. first. And I don't, okay. I, 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 I cringe at, I, I absolutely cringe at mess. Um, me, God damn it. I can't even think about bringing this up, but Scott, your volume's too low. I, I don't want this to go into a five minute phone adjustment. Can't you just hit the volume button? I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on, man. It's turned. It was all fine until you got until you got that phone call. Then all of a sudden, it's like you're in a different yes. room. They all good things. Okay, me. we are recording. So go ahead, Scott. All right, eight tracks on the Diary of a Madman album. We're going to rank them least favorite to favorite as we dig them. I guess you could say, right? All right, I'm going to go first. My number eight is a song that I don't particularly care that much about um it's okay but it's to me it's flat on this album it sounds like the um kind of offbeat type even off vocal on this a little bit kind of like his sabbath stuff that's why i said that a while ago on the last couple of albums he done with sabbath which are not that great it's uh sato S-A-T-O. That's my least favorite song on this album. Okay. And it's not bad, but it's just Ozzy singing with a his voice on here. It's I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. It's different. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. My number eight tune. Um, I just felt that this song was boring. I would have hit fast forward on this song, except for it was the last song on the album, and that's the title track, Diary of a Madman. It's like it, it, it's he said nothing. Like I said before, nothing on this album is horrible to me. There's just songs I like least uh, or less than the others, and the title track is the first one that meets that description. It's six minutes and 15 seconds long. It's And there's nothing that makes it stand out to be a, a great tune or a better tune. Uh, so that's where I put it at the end. All right. <clears throat> My okay. number eight is right there with Scotty on Sato. Um, my notes on this start with capital letters. Fucking horrible with an exclamation point. <laughs> this scattered drum beat shit like Neil Pert drives me up the fucking wall. I hate that shit. I don't, not a drummer. I don't care how much talent it takes. I hate Rush for a plethora of reasons. And that's one of them. I can't stand that. It makes. It, it sounds like this record is skipping or someone's putting their hand on the vinyl and stopping it real quick. I don't like it. It completely destroys the flow of the song. Uh, I, I, I can't. I can't listen to crap like that. I just can't. So there you that go. whole song, dude, is kind of uh, it, it, the vocals. The You're right about the drums and stuff, too, man. It, 
I don't know what it is about that song. It's like it's just not. It's like they went in the damn studio and just he started just singing. They just started playing and they didn't edit anything. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me, man. It's just something. I don't know. Eight songs. God dang, man. You really had to throw something on here. But yeah. there you go. Um, number seven for me. Um, now we're into songs automatically that I really like. I mean, that's the only one on here that I don't really have much to say good about. So, uh, number seven is tonight. I really like his vocals. I know it's a slower paced song, like you said. It's type of a ballad type song, and it is. Uh, but he really, the chorus, he really hits the chorus good with the tune. I mean, he really sings it great. The jam in it's good. When they do pick it up, they're rocking. And I've always liked that song. So I'm not going to really have a hell of a whole lot to, to pick up. I mean, to pick up. To uh, pick at, um, from here on out, you know, maybe tempo changes, but it seems like Ozzy pulls the tempo change off fairly fucking excellent to me. So, I'm not, I like ballads, so, all right. All right. Number seven, the both of you already hit on this one, and that's Sato, Sato, S-A-T-O, however you want to say it. Uh, again, the... I didn't necessarily mind the different tempos. I just felt that it was out of place on the album, right? It didn't match up with the rest of it. So that's the reason. Yeah. And again, there's nothing in that song that makes it stand out. Um, again, I think there's a lot of, I don't want to call it filler, but more generic rock on this than there is. Um, you know, There are a couple of really good songs, in my opinion, but Sato isn't one of them. Okay, number seven, one step off of Darren, Diarrhea of a Madman is what this should have been called. Uh, you got more off time Neil Pert ish drumming in this, not as egregious as Sato, uh, but it's just a bad song, right? It just goes on and on, and there's nothing that grabs you at all. Nothing stands out. It is just, uh, for six minutes. I, I just, I, I do not like well, it. And six it's odd. And 15 seconds. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's odd that a title track is this bad. I don't, I can't remember anybody, any band's title track being one of the worst songs on an album, but this one is. <laughs> I guess we're crapping all over his number one. Uh, yeah. It's y'all are just full of. <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> number six yeah y'all enjoyed doing that i noticed here lately um but i never said it was my number one so anyway <laughs> no, no. now that you're now that you're frantically scribbling it out and rewriting it <laughs> no i ain't touching it my hands right here <laughs> number five we're already at number five six six um, six, six. I, oh number six. six. Oh, my bad yeah you're right i'm looking at the wrong list okay <laughs> ah, damn it it's been too long since we've done a video i guess dude um believer man Believer, and this is one of those albums that the way I listen to it and the way that I like the songs from least favorite to favorite, every one of these songs get better and better. I do not have anything that's on the same level on this album. It's not like that I would say I had a hell of a time with the middle part of this or I had a hell of a time with the top three. No, I love pretty much all of this album, but there is a distinguished difference in one to the next, man. I didn't have a hard time at all putting this one together. All right. All right. Um, Believe. All right. Number six, 
Uh, for once, Scott got something right. So ring the bell. I also believe her at number six. Um, you know, I did have a little bit more of trouble in the middle tracks because I there were a couple of tunes that I just felt were kind of on the same level. So, um, but Believer again, too long. I mean, it's a minute shorter than Diar Diarrhea of a Madman. Thank God, but it's you know for a slower <laughs> tune. For a slower tune, it should have. It shouldn't be that damn long. I should have wanted to hit fast forward. Um, yes, Believer number six. Okay. Number six for me. Is, what? Yes, I said that on purpose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, that was good. I like that one, bro. <laughs> okay. Number six for me is one Scott touched on tonight. And uh, my notes on this are a typical whiny attempt at a ballad by Ozzy. Other than Mama, I'm coming home and close my eyes forever. This man should never be allowed to do a ballad ever. Uh, and that's just my opinion. He don't have the voice for it. He don't have the emotion for it. And apparently he doesn't know how to have his musicians write music for it. Uh, they're all beyond mind-numbingly boring. Uh, and this is no exception. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be negative as hell. Tell the first, tell the my first three tracks. Doesn't mean I hate these songs. I'm just pointing out the disappointment level because this is not this album is a horrible representation, as was Bark at the Moon of what Ozzy's capable of. So there you go. Okay, all right. <laughs> tell us how you really feel, bro. Um, yeah, I don't hate it, man. I just got to say this is. I'm disgusted. I lied. I lied. I lied. If this wasn't I if this lie. wasn't the Prince of Darkness, I might not be so hard on these songs, but it is. I expect well, more from, from Ozzy Osbourne. That's what I'm saying. I expect more. Black Sabbath. You know, that's where he got that name from. But anyway, I lied. I did have trouble with about three of them, so I totally lied. Um, and. It was the one I just said, Believer, and the next one, which is five. Those, these three here, I did have trouble with. Not a lot, but I did have trouble with them. So I take that back. Little Dolls. Now, I really do like this one a lot. This one actually, um, I don't know. I, I guess I kind of ignored it over the years, man. I guess maybe the, the title <laughs> or something. I don't know. But it's not a bad song, man. It's a jamming song, actually. Um, Ozzy's vocal performance, I think, is great on here. And you you said that he shouldn't be allowed to do uh, ballads. Okay. Now, I can agree with you about 50-50 on that all the way. He should not be allowed to do ballads that are slow all the way through. Yeah, like, he needs uh, to pick up that. He needs the up and down. Yes, those he does. I think he pulls off pretty good, but that one, yeah. like on Mark at the Moon, that, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, oh. So tired, so tired. That is a piano playing Ozzy mm -hmm. ballad that's just straight from hell. Now, I'll give you that. Um, but yeah, yeah man. He's so tired to listen to that piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but. I like Little Dolls. That is a damn jamming tune, man. So, heard you collect number them. I do. I got four of them right here. You want to do right. show and tell? No. Did y'all right. see my uh, Halloween picture? Halloween picture? No. Uh, yeah, I had to decorate my trunk. Oh, you know, yeah, we yeah, done yeah. the trunk. Yep. yep, I saw that. Everybody was loving mine, dude. That was awesome. All right, my number five, the both of you have already lit this one on fire enough, and that is tonight. Oh, um, Scott liked it. Scott liked it. At, I, I, again, I, I agree with Scott. The chorus isn't bad. Uh, it is a slow tune. Again, uh, something that 
he shouldn't do very often unless it, at some point it picks up or whatever. But yeah, tonight, um, not the best. Okay, number five for me. Right there with Scott on Little Dolls. Um, I love the song Dolls on Freely's Comet. Uh, debut oh. album. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that's oh, fantastic. Oh. The kids singing on there, his daughter, I think, or whatever, the keyboards in there. Brilliant song. This is okay. I, I just put it's a little boring. Um, yeah. It could have used a little something. I don't know what. I'm not a producer. I know I just play one on TV and I stayed in the Holiday Inn Express last night. But other than that, it's okay. I can't believe you like it. Dolls, Ace Frehley song. Oh, that's a that's a fantastic song. song. That is hard. I love it. We've oh, already established that you don't have very good taste in music. So, I mean, I get it. Yeah, I've established that already. I can tell. Both of you. <laughs> but anyway, all right. Number I can't count four. Number two. Number two. All right. Four. Number two. Just fucking, just fucking oh. weak. Just fucking weak. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Number four. Now, we're getting into real great rockers on this album. You can't kill rock and roll it ain't you can't stop rock and roll you can't kill rock and roll now this is a perfect example of Up and Ozzy doing a ballad that is freaking fabulous he yeah. blends this in and out perfectly Always been one of my favorite songs. And the tempo album. goes up and down. I mean, that's yeah, that's what we we're talking about. Yeah. Great riff, guitar playing, dude. Just absolutely spectacular. So that lets you know how much I think about the rest of this album. Yes. All right. Number four. <clears throat> I like this song a little bit better than the the two of you. This is where I put little dolls. Uh, like Rob, I have on in my notes on the boring side a little bit. It is a slower tempo. I do enjoy the drum opening, albeit brief. I do like the way that the, that song starts off with the drums. Um, but yes, again, five minutes and 39 seconds, so a little a little long, but it's a decent tune, Little girl, uh, Little Dolls. Okay, my number four is Believer. Um this is a decent song. Um, it tends to kind of jump around a little bit. The only real negative I have on here is that has got to be one of the longest fade outs I've ever heard in my life. You know, at the end of the song, it just goes and goes while getting quieter and quieter. I'm like, why are you? I kept waiting. Okay, something's going to happen here, right? Something's going to stand out that they are just stretching out this ending and it just eventually fades to nothing. I mean, it doesn't ruin the song, but it just leaves me scratching my yeah. head. Like, if you were going to do the fade out, why would you do it so gradual? Well, to take I think that that's much? because it's track number four on an eight eight track album, right? So on okay. on vinyl, yes. that would have been end of side one. Okay, yeah. So that's There's where the fade out would have happened. Okay. We're running into on some of these shorter albums, man, where the songs mm -hmm. are little bit longer guys and you got the long fade out like darren said they're making up for space man okay that makes that's sense all. that's i mean it's got to be think about it yeah you know? yeah um okay number three if i'm not mistaking the first single from the album i could be wrong it could have been the second single but I'm pretty sure this is the first song I heard from this album. Um, and it's damn awesome. Really awesome. It used to be, kind of be a staple for Ozzy. As a matter of fact, it is. It didn't used to be. It is. So flying high again. Freaking wicked, man. One of his the go-to song. There's two go-to songs on this album that he uses live. And this is one of them. And uh, this was the radio song for the majority of the time 
and then the other song kind of came along down the road but flying high again love it i love if you pay attention to ozzy's lyrics dude every song ozzy writes is either the damn truth and he's telling a story bro he's really talking real things man and that's why a lot of people really don't like him for some reason i don't know why you know uh, or they have something to say, you know, about what he does and how he writes and what he sings. But I always found him unique for that reason, you know. And if he puts the song together good while he's doing it, so what? I don't give a damn what he's singing about, you know. Yeah. But Blind High again, man. Number three. All right. Uh, number three. Yes. No, Scott said number four for flying high oh. again. It's number three. All right. My number three, uh, I know Scott has already talked about this one. This is where I put in You Can't Kill Rock and Roll. Um, I like the the acoustic opening, uh, the mix of tempo on this song. And again, it has the you know the up and down in there. Um so, yeah, I mean, just because, uh, you know, I made a comment earlier about how I was shocked that there were, you know, a lot of slower or mid-tempo songs on here. That doesn't mean I didn't like some of them. Uh, and that's totally true of You Can't Kill Rock and Roll. I think this was a great song. That yes. was your number three? Yes, sir. Right there with you. This is what I want out of an Aussie mid to low tempo song. Like me and Scott talked about, the up and down, you can't kill rock and roll. Very well done. Love the guitar in this, the sound, the riff. Uh, it's addicting. Um, and, and again, I love the tempo change in this. It is really, these top three are rock solid songs for me. Again, the old, the one thing I'll go back to that song. The one thing that could have been different, and I, yes, I know this was the '80s and things were a little bit different. It's a seven-minute fucking song, six minutes and yeah. fifteen minutes seconds. It's still on the long side. I mean, I think you could have trimmed minute and a half out of there somehow, and it still would have been a great tune. Leave anyway. me alone. Anyway. Don't want your promises no more. Oh, the chorus is wicked in that song, dude. Come on, you don't want to trim none of that fat, bro. Hey. <laughs> anyway, yeah. We like songs, man. We like Master of Puppets by Metallica. We love them seven, eight minute songs, dude. What are you talking about? Come on. All right. I know you do, Darren. He's done told on you already, so you can't act like you don't. What? Number what? two. Oh <laughs> shit! I got a, I got an echo. There's there we a lot go. of people screaming tonight. You're at, yeah, I see it now. All right. Okay. okay. Who was the last one? Uh, is is it on me? Number two. Yes. Okay. All right. We're getting down to the Mita Grita guys. Number two, and probably the majority of the people's well. The last song, uh, Flying High Again, and this song is the majority that you're going to get on this album that like these two songs more than the rest of them. It's Over the Mountain. Great freaking song. Absolutely great song. Rocking song. Ozzy all the way through and through. I mean, it's just badass. There's nothing much that I can say. I can't say anything bad about it at all. It's a rocker. I mean, it's a damn jamming song. Um, I'm one of the ones that have a problem with the production on this album and Blizzard of Oz. I wish they would have really got a higher bass, thicker, freaking heavier drum sound on these albums. And these songs would have, I think, literally, yeah. been, literally been brought to life in this form. <laughs> But with the, with the slower no, tunes on here, I don't know if that would have been a great idea. I mean, maybe on the do something with the production on the oh, on the yeah. fast it tunes. Would have but... changed everything. It would have made the slower tunes heavier and rawer. Man, I mean, it's just a flat production. 
I mean, it, 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 if you just listen to them, don't be listening to the remasters and all that stuff, man. The original versions. And you'll see what I'm talking about. The drums sound like Kiss Alive 2 drums. You know, and it's, <laughs> you know, it's tinny. You know, whatever, you know. But Over the Mountain, number two, it's a great song, by the way. I do love it. Um, but I just think they could have done a better job. When they got to Bark at the Moon, they done a better job with production. Probably not as good a, a job as the songs as the last two albums, but the production was better. And you had Jake E. Lee. So, there you go. All right. Number two, I went the other direction. I went with Flying High again for the number two song, mostly because it is a more of a mid-tempo a little bit slower than over the mountain. I think it does have a great solo. Like I said, out of out of these, I mean, the top three songs in here, I've always liked those. Over the mountain, flying high again, can't kill rock and roll. Uh, but for me, uh, flying high again comes in at number two. And it's ironic too, right? I mean, those are the first three songs on the album. Yep. Right. Yeah. And then again, so you listen to those and. And then the rest of it, and it's just mediocre, right? I mean, it's like I said, there's nothing horrible. It's just not as good as those top three songs. Yeah, I, 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 I noticed. I noticed that tonight before we started. I'm like, God damn, my top three songs are the top three songs <laughs> on the album, just in a little different order. Uh, I just about had two, it in order as the damn album. I mean, almost it was. I about didn't have to change any fucking. Yeah. <laughs> but one song. But one song. Yeah. My number two is Over the Mountain. Uh, great song. This is one that I knew, one of the two I knew off of this album, three if you count Diarrhea. But um, great guitar. See, see these, these three songs that start the album is what I expect from solo Ozzy Osbourne, and that's probably because I came into him with Ultimate Sit. So when I hear this other stuff it just takes me back like what is this ozzy um so yeah over the mountain great guitar work legendary song in my mind because i've known this for decades um great great tune and one thing that you have to remember about the ultimate sin up until that time the greatest production on a fucking ozzy album ever I mean, literally, dude, that is a greatly produced Ozzy album. Yeah. Perfect. Um, the production, in my opinion, now, a lot of people may not look at it that way, but it's a make or break thing for a lot of people. If you're not really into the band, you know, if the sound's not good, people will say, fuck it, yeah, you know. But, um, they, but one, yet, and Justice one. for All is still something that Metallica fans like. Well, and I'll tell you something that that is, that is so true what Scott says because there's an artist I absolutely love, have loved since I was a kid. I cannot, I have tried over the years to even pull his tracks into things like Audacity and bump up the volume. Billy Squire's production. On every fucking album, whoever the, who was producing those albums is an absolute buffoon. If you put, if you pick 10 different songs from 10 different artists off 10 different albums and put them all on a mixtape or line them all up, you know, not for some reason Spotify and stuff like that is exempt from this. They must have some equalizing oh, program. Equalizer. Yeah. But I've tried all of that. And Billy Squires will always come out half the fucking volume. So I couldn't tell you if they're produced well or not because you you crank your volume to 10 and it's like it's on five. So I've had yeah. to, for decades, leave him off of mixed. Another one of my most favorite albums of all time is Collective Soul's debut album. Motherfucker is so muffled and low volume output that it just destroys any mix you have it on. I, I, I just great songs, great performers, terrible, terrible production. And why they're yes. so, if you try to boost it yourself as a ham and egger like me in audacity, you come with distorted shit. 
because it's not supposed to be that loud. I, I don't know why they do it that way, but you're absolutely right. Production, whether it's muddy, tinny, or too low, can absolutely destroy your listening experience. Yeah, it can. And that's one thing I can say that ACDC 99.9% got it right when it comes to that because their shit you'll have to turn down. You know, yeah. so that, yeah, that, you're right, man. That, that'll that make or break. I've got albums that do that, man. I've got a flash drive in my car that I load, whatever. Different songs, it's man. I'll have to turn it up and down, man, constantly. Yeah, that's fucking maddening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number one. I think we're all going to line up on number one again. And the gods of the Oz man is going to let us do that, hopefully. Diary of a Madman. Freaking genius, bro. Great song. I love the twisted lyrics and the twisted sound. This one, I love. Totally this off crazy tempo. Da, 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 da. I love this shit, man. And it used to be like number three or four on here behind the over the mountain, flying high, and you can't kill rock and roll. But over time, I listen to that song more than any of them on here. I love that song. I love the crazy, psychotic side of Ozzy. I mean, what the hell was he writing this when he was having a drug meltdown? And you got to remember, when these albums were coming out, Ozzy was fucking out there, brother. I mean, way out there on the limb. So pretty much playing Russian roulette, you know, with his life, uh, like a lot of them. But I love the song, unlike you guys. <clears throat> um, and I love the other songs, too, <clears throat> that come behind it. Uh, not a bad album. Actually, a great album by Ozzy to me. But Darren's right when he says, you know, when you guys, both of you, when you guys say, you know, after the first three songs, it kind of just, uh, you know, it just gets weaker and weaker. And, yeah, that's true. I'm not, sh I'm not shocked in any way because of the situations they were probably written in. And, you know, thank God we got these two or three good songs out of him. Let's get him to finish this fucking thing and let's get it out there. You know, the record companies and stuff, you know, y'all know how that goes. But anyway, that's my number one. Yeah. Getting a perfect. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but get, yeah, to your point, getting a perfect album is almost impossible. I mean, there are very few of them out there. Again, this is an album where I, I didn't think anything was extremely horrible. This is something that I could listen to all the way through, except for maybe Diary of a Madman. I'd want to end that song. Sato. And Sato. But for me, track, for me, the number one track <laughs> is Over the Mountain. I love this riff. Um, and I love the way that it, it ends with that riff abruptly as well. I mean, so, uh, yep. Just And the only thing that I question, and it, and it doesn't ruin the song by any means, but like in the chorus and then towards the end, they have that weird keyboard sound like they're it's like it reminds me of the scene out of uh ferris bueller's day off where he ends that call with that chick on a sneeze it sounds like that's what he's fucking doing during that song it's just that weird fucking song a sound in there that it just kind of drives me crazy <laughs> Ozzy's always going to have it's, keyboards at some point in time in his album, yeah, in his music. For me, it doesn't synthesize fit, right? like said, organ. It doesn't, doesn't change the, how I feel about the song. I just question why it's there. Um, but yes, for me, the, the, the best song on the album is Over the Mountain. Okay. okay. For me, number one has always been number one. In fact, one of my favorite Aussie songs of all time, Flying High Again. I can't stress the rhythm work in this that Randy Rhodes pulls off. And even when I hear Zach Wilde do it live, he I can't describe it. Darren, you're a guitar player. Did you know? This has always stood out to me. 
Wardy says, I've been a bad, bad boy. Right before that, it's just, wow, wow. And it's not lead, it's rhythm. But the way he's strumming it and the way it sounds, it's, I can't place it, but it is so fucking, it's my favorite part it's, of the song. Every unique. time that comes up, that wow, wow. It's yeah. like, wow. Unbelievable. I love this Thank fucking you, song. I, I mean, that. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes is one of the few guitar players, and they are out there, man, and guy in bands that don't have rhythm guitars. Man, that can pull it's the like shit he's off and sweeping the strings. Instead of just hitting a note, it's like you can oh. hear every string sweeping in order. It, it's just yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's called sweep picking, right? And oh. I'll tell you what, when I uh, – I recently, you know, we talked about it in the last episode. I saw Lily and Axe and they're, I can't, I wish I could remember which song that Steve Blaze does it, but I got, I mean, I got to watch it front and center. I, I'm pretty sure I have it on video, but just the sweep picking that he's doing and just, he doesn't oh. miss a fucking string when he's doing it. And it's, fucking yeah. amazing. So and he, hear, it's one thing for arpeggios and stuff lead to be doing that. But just to hear a chord, wow, wow, it's such a cool sound. It stood out the day I first ever heard the song. And only recently when I started seeing some live footage over the last few years where Zach Wilde was playing that I'm like, motherfucker, still, he can do it too. What is that? It, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I love this. Song. Absolutely love the song. Yeah, I do too, man. Uh, and it's it, like I said, man, it, and like, Darren even touched on it just a little bit ago. I don't think he actually meant to, but he did. Uh, this album, because he said he could listen to this album. And the reason I think that most of us as hard rock, metal heads, whatever the hell you want to call us, can relate to an album like this is because it's kind of a twisted, damn near sadistic album that's all over the place. It actually keeps you entertained enough to get through it man and i will give uh ozzy credit for being that twisted at the time to put well, it together I'll, man. Say this, I'll say this much it's definitely not one of those where every song sounds the same that's for damn sure no 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 those no. those it, albums it, will bore the piss out of me like yes. led zeppelin and yep. early metallica if i can't tell when one song stops and the next starts other than there's a pause but it basically is a continuation. I am so bored that I stopped listening. Yeah, it's, you know, it's tough. Zeppelin, the only thing I can handle are the pauses between songs. I mean, that's just a fucking... <laughs> oh, come on, man. Ooh, I'm not well, there we go. About, I'm not crazy about all that Zeppelin stuff either, man. But dang, when's the last time you give Zeppelin 2 or that's my favorite one, Zeppelin 2 a chance, you know? I mean, just for the sake of it. You know, maybe uh, a little well, bit. Better. Actually, actually, about two months ago, when I did a reaction video for Zeppelin, and it still sucks. So, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I lived in Arizona, I, I there was one radio station that I listened to a lot, especially commuting to and from work. And They'll make you hate them. The program yeah. director for that station. I mean, I loved the majority of the stuff they played, but the program director had a. a you know, a three inch hard on for Led Zeppelin and he played the shit out of them. I swear to God, I think it, it's, they had to play two Zeppelin songs like every hour. It, it's yeah. crazy how much Zeppelin they played. And I would change the channel every time one came on. I, I tried, man, I have tried over and over. It's Robert Plant. It's That's, his singing. I just yeah. can't do it. I mean, Paige, good on the guitar, right? I mean, uh, Bonham, great on the drums. Yes, but, but hey, look. As soon as Robert opens the hole, it ruins everything. I'll me. tell you what, and I've said that I don't understand how Paul idolizes Robert Plant's voice so much, Paul Stanley. But I'll tell really? you when Robert Robert Plant became very listenable for me once he went solo. Oh, he, no. I don't know if his voice matured or what, but he when he's doing things like Big Log. Man, he's got me hooked. It's just a mesmerizing. His voice is much more suited for soothing ballads than rock music. His scream is painful to the fucking ears. <laughs> and 
when anybody mentions how kingdom come is trying to sound like led zeppelin i want to punch right in their fucking mouth first of all kingdom come musically is a hundred times better than led zeppelin could ever fucking be and exactly. lenny wolf has so much more power than robert plant could ever fucking dream of having exactly. that is a horrible comparison i can see the same style of music but there is absolutely no comparison between kingdom come and led zeppelin absolutely yeah. I, can, I can sit down and listen to kingdom oh, comes first three albums and right. not miss a beat all day long with, yep i can't do I that mean, with led zeppelin. nowhere close kingdom nope. come is heavier man i mean all zeppelin's not intentionally meant to be a hard rock band really they just kind of got thrown into that mix because of about half of their discography the other half hell if you can make it through two songs or one on led zeppelin three be my guest now that is a <laughs> fucking disaster i don't know why they would have thought about doing that shit and i don't know y'all ever even tried it Tr just try it one time just once but anyway um uh, we could go down that road a long ways boys um uh, but um you got a ball game tonight, right? Uh, yeah, Rob, starting here about 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, well, here's look, the uh, echo again. Well, no. Come on, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, we're done anyway. We hey, nobody's disappeared yet, though, or froze. So No, I've got to figure out what the hell's going on here. Okay. All right. So next if video, we're going to do right. Van Halen 2. Van Halen 2, that sounds good. Y'all want to do that after the game? Oh, that'll be late. Oh, late even, that, that's going to be too late. That game's not going to get over to after 11 our time, my time. Okay. Just let me know when you guys want to do that one. And uh, we still got our uh, Kiss fourth album. Just whenever you get it done. Uh, we got uh, the Filthy 15 that we're gradually working on. No rush for that. Um. So to pick one from the top and it comes up whenever it does, I ain't even looking at it to be honest with you. So I don't know what it is. I'll put it in the frame here. Tesla, great radio controversy. Yeah. Is that good enough for y'all? Um, I like well, Tesla. I, like I mean, Tesla. so I, I wouldn't so be averse to that. I mean, I'm just saying I mixed things up. So y'all wasn't liking the, the Zeppelin and the Metallica and uh, the stuff like that. I've got more 80s higher metal than anything. I just didn't have it separated. Or do you want That's me fine. to pick another one? No, I'm just no, trying I'm not to I'm talk. Just I'm just trying not to talk because of the fucking echo. Fucking echo. Yeah, you're good. You're good. We can do Tesla. Okay, let's void that. Let's just do Van Halen too. We'll we'll pick no, another. No, one no, 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 no. I, I, no, we can do it. I, I was, I'm trying not to talk because I'm echoing so bad. I know we want to get this and over with. Yeah. yeah. So, and you make sure it went through. Okay. All right. Diary of a Madman, Ozzy, you're giving us a lot of shit, brother. So I hope this one comes through. Yeah. All right. Until next time, everybody, I suppose. Uh, sorry again for the freaking production, but uh, is what it is. And until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.